Hello, welcome to the Wednesday, August 23rd, 2023 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Xavier found some interesting, different malware using a new or relatively new, at least for malware, uh, encryption algorithm called Fernet Encryption. Fernet Encryption has been around for a while. 2016 is the last day the actual Python module was updated for it. But Xavier has observed that in recent months, there's a little uptick in the use of this algorithm in malware. Big question, of course, why is malware attracted to the algorithm? There is no sort of obvious reason when it comes to usability. You actually, as Xavier shows, have to specifically install the respective uh, Python module for Windows Python. The reason may be, in my opinion, kind of that uh, since it's a somewhat unusual algorithm, it may evade some of the detection that you sometimes find in anti-malware that attempts to detect encryption, in particular if it's trying to sort of disrupt ransomware. Not really clear if that's the reason, or maybe it's just a simple uh, to use algorithm. There's also no real good review that I could see for this particular algorithm to kind of you know, figure out if it's any good. But for cases like this, for malware, it often isn't really all that important how good it is as far as the security of the encryption goes, but more, well, how difficult it is to detect that files are being encrypted or decrypted. It's a simple symmetric algorithm, which also makes it really not that suitable uh, for ransomware in the sense that, well, the key is delivered as part of the malicious binary. So really more maybe to transmit some encrypted binaries and then decrypt it on the victim to evade network detection. Well, and uh, wonder what Xavier's superpowers are that he can look into so much malware so quickly. Xavier gives us a little insight into the back end that he uses to do some triage with uh, malware. The tool that Xavier uses to collect his malware is Malware Sue, and on that system, Xavier runs an iNotify script. Whenever a new file is created, meaning whenever a new piece of malware is being uh, added to malware so it will just do two simple things create a sha256 hash of the file and then also do a lookup on virus total of course then you can figure out if the ones with lots of hits or little hits are the ones that you consider interesting for additional analysis Xavier points out that a script could also be used then to do some deeper analysis depending on the file type, like for example, extracting strings from PE files or disassemble some shell code. Really depends on your creativity, what you sort of add to this script. And back in March, Adobe patched a deserialization vulnerability in Adobe's Cold Fusion product. This is a product that tends to attract attackers, so no real big surprise that CISA now notes that this vulnerability, CVE 2023-26359, is already being exploited. If you are running Cold Fusion, well, uh, take a little bit of time and do a quick check. Make sure that you are up to date. In order uh, to be safe, you need to have the 2008 update 16 or the version 2021 update 6 installed. Another vulnerability added to CISA's known exploited vulnerabilities catalog is CVE 2023-32315. This is a vulnerability in the open fire chat software. It affects the management component of it. The vulnerability was made public and patched about a month ago, July 19th. And yes, it's being exploited now. A blog post by Wolncheck does have additional details about the vulnerability, including how to exploit it. It's a directory traversal vulnerability that can allow an unauthenticated user to pretty much take over the OpenFire admin console. And Sentinel-1 has a write-up 
about the latest version of Xloader. Xloader is Mac malware that has been around for a couple of years. It had sort of one problem that it did require Java. And of course, recent versions of Mac OS do not have Java pre-installed. That problem has been solved now. According to Sentinel-1, the latest version that they have seen no longer requires Java and apparently is uh, being spreading right now. Xloader itself does require that the user starts it. So it doesn't really come sort of an exploit that would sort of do a zero click install of the software. It's often then just being distributed using the standard tricks of, well, uh, some software update, uh, some flash uh, plugin or whatever that users think they may need. Uh, maybe also a Java runtime that would also be a nice trick for them, even though I haven't seen that one yet. Well, uh, this is it for today. Thanks for listening. And then again, if you like this podcast, please subscribe. If you don't like it, subscribe as well and download it. I do this podcast because people are listening. So let us know. Thanks and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.